there is one thing that all those previous tricks have in common, and that's the back roll. There's a lot of ways to initiate it, so that's what we're looking at today. What's up everyone, my name is Steven Arkesdijk. I'm currently in Tofino, Canada. It wasn't just right for kiting today, so I decided to teach you guys something. Well, hopefully teach you guys something. Today we are looking at the back roll, and the back roll is a very important trick as it lies the foundation of so many other tricks. Next to that, it's probably the first real trick that you're gonna try out once you start kiting after the jump and maybe a rally, but that's another story. So today we are going to look at different variations of back roll and there's one key thing to keep in mind. These variations, they all start with the head. Let's look at your first classic back roll and after that we're going into further details with inverted and sent back rolls. Ride in with medium speed and steer the kite up from 45 degrees. Start edging and carve your board into the wind. Look over your front shoulder and pull the bar down as you pop off the water. Spot your landing as soon as possible and continue your rotation. Shorten or extend your body in order to adjust the rotational speed. Extend your legs to absorb the landing and get back to a cross or upwind course. With any back roll, there's two elements that have a fairly big impact on your rotational speed and they both start before the takeoff. First, we have the edging and second, we have the carving. When I talk about edging, I mean how much pressure do you put on your heels to resist against that kite? When I say carving, I mean how quick do you turn that board into the wind? The faster you turn your board into the wind, the higher your rotational speed will be once your board leaves the water. So, more carving results in a higher rotational speed. Edging isn't directly connected to the amount of twist you get because the harder you edge, the higher you will go, but it doesn't necessarily mean you will rotate faster or slower. That all depends on your carve. Remember when I said that the head is a very important thing when doing a back roll or any rotation for that matter? If I turn my head, most of the time my body will follow. So that's why it's very important that you keep your head turned throughout the rotation and spot your landing as soon as possible. Another thing that impacts the rotation speed a lot is your body. If you make yourself small and compact, you will rotate a lot faster. If I extend myself, I'm going to rotate a lot slower. So if you notice you're going for an over rotation, you could extend all the way out to make it a single, but you could also say, I'm gonna make myself very small to try a double. Maybe not something you wanna try in your first one, but hey, it's an option. One of the most common mistakes I see with the back roll is over rotation. This can come from a couple of things, but most of the time it comes from you carving too fast upwind and therefore having too much of a rotational speed when exiting the water. And the other one is that you're probably steering your kite too far up. It goes towards 12, you get more hang time than you wanted and therefore you rotate too fast. Hand positioning really helps when it comes to steering of the kite. Don't grab your bar all the way on the outside because then you have a lot of steering input with your hands. I find that if I switch my hands towards the middle that I have more control over the kite and it's less likely that I'm going to steer it up the wrong way. Talking about kite, let's see what the kite does when you do a classic back roll. Ride in with medium speed and steer the kite up from 45 degrees. Edge and carve into the wind as your kite passes one. Pull the bar down, pop and stop the kite movement just before it hits 12. Redirect the kite towards 45 degrees when you've spotted your landing. Pull the bar down or push it out to adjust the rotational speed. Land and dive the kite down towards two if you don't have enough speed. Ride out with the kite at 45 degrees. As mentioned before, it's very important that a kite doesn't pass 12 on this specific back roll. 
Next to that, you want to redirect your kite towards the riding direction as soon as you can spot your landing. This will help you to land with more speed and more souplesse on the landing. Next up is a sand back roll. This one is slightly different even though it might look the same, but the big difference is that your kite is now passing 12 o'clock. So let's have a look. Right in with medium speed and steer the kite up from 45 degrees. Start edging towards the wind as the kite passes 1. Continue steering the kite towards 11.30 and pop off the water just before the kite hits 12. As with a normal jump, keep your kite on the left side of 12 until you're going down. Redirect your kite to the right for the landing. Dive your kite down towards 2 on the landing to gain speed after the jump. Continue riding with your kite at 45 degrees and across or upwind course. If you've paid attention, you'll have noticed that my kite actually does pass 12 in this sand back roll. I'm not going that high due to the lack of wind and the lack of edging on my part, but this sand back roll is the foundation for jumps with a back roll and kite loops with a back roll. Therefore, it's a very important technique to understand. The big difference is the kite steering. Because I do steer my kite past 12, I'm going to spend more time in the air. But what would happen if I carved just as hard as I did with a classic back roll? I would most likely over rotate because I'm spending more time in the air and therefore with the same amount of rotation, I would over rotate. Therefore, it's very important that you actually carve a lot less hard than you would with a classic back roll. That doesn't mean you can't edge hard. Remember, edging and carving are different things. You can edge really hard so you actually go high with stronger winds, but then it's even more important that you carve a little bit slower so you don't make a quadruple back roll. Next up, we're gonna have a close-up look at how this sand back roll goes. Steer the kite up from 45 degrees and start edging as the kite passes one. Carve into the wind and look over your front shoulder as you take off from the water. Spot your landing as soon as possible and focus on controlling your kite. Redirect your kite as you're coming down for the landing. Tension up your stomach muscles to pull the board underneath you and absorb the landing and dive the kite for power if needed. The timing for redirecting your kite and the amount of carve you give before you take off largely depends on your final jump height. If you're gonna be jumping higher, you wanna carve a lot slower and also redirect your kite a lot later. To make this a little bit easier to understand and understand the differences between a sand back roll and a classic back roll, I've put a close up side by side so you can actually see for yourself. With the sand back roll, I carve less hard into the wind. You can see this by the way my board is pointing out of the water. Due to this, I hang more vertically under my kite instead of being flipped into the back roll. With the sand back roll, I'll have a way more hang time and a softer landing as the kite actually passes 12 and supports my weight. The type of back roll that you do doesn't only depend on how you steer a kite. Another big part is how you move your head. If I throw my head back, my body is gonna follow back. So next up, we're actually gonna look at a bit more of an inverted back roll and it all starts with the head. Steer the kite up from 45 degrees and start edging as the kite passes one. Carve into the wind and put a lot of pressure on the lines by edging. Throw your head forward as you take off and look down towards the water. Continue looking at your toe side edge as the board comes around. Spot your landing when you've completed three quarters of the turn. Extend your legs to absorb the impact of the landing and continue riding on a cross or upwind course. The key to correctly doing this rotation all begins in a takeoff. You really wanna have a lot of commitment and throw your head forwards into that rotation. Next to that, it really helps if you look at your toe side edge and try to throw your head towards your toe side edge. Like that, your head is gonna go down, your feet are gonna go up, and you're gonna be doing that inverted back roll. Your kite steering though, is exactly the same as with a classic back roll. If you would send your kite up and pass 12, it would lift you up too much and make the invert too hard. So that's why it's very important not to steer a kite past 12 o'clock. 
and that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Subscribe if you did, give me a thumbs up. Next week, we're talking about front rolls. So stay tuned and I see you there.